The mayfly lives for only 24 hours. A Greenland shark can live to be over 240 years. And as for us humans, we live for about 72 years on average worldwide. Why is there such a big difference? Some people think the answer lies in our genes. Let's start by looking at gene effect on lifespan and the current states of human gene editing. Then I'll address what the biggest indicators of lifespan really are. A gene is a sequence in DNA or RNA that act as instructions for our body. We don't know exactly how many genes there are, but we guess it's about 30,000, give or take. We used to think 25% of your genes were responsible for aging, but actually Stat News reports that less than 7% are more specifically related to lifespan. Some of these gerontogenes, if you allow, are DAF2, PI3K, and FOXO. DAF2 controls many other genes falling into functional categories for antioxidants, metabolism, and stress resistance. FOXO, the forkhead family of genes, deals with metabolism, optosis, which is programmed cell death, and the cell cycle. Lastly, PI3K, which is partly known due to how its mutations led to longer life in a nematode type called C. elegans, it is also important in regulating the cell cycle. Great, you may think. If we know these genes are related to aging, couldn't we just edit them and increase our lifespan? Well, this is where things get a bit tricky. Firstly, there can be some unintended consequences of trying to edit genes. We don't really know everything a gene might be linked to. Even if we have a pretty good idea, things can go very badly. One example of this is from an article titled China's Failed Gene-Edited Baby Experiment Proves We're Not Ready for Human Embryo Modification by Dimitri Perrin on a site called The Conversation. A research team attempted to illegally modify the CCR5 gene in human embryos to provide HIV resistance. Unfortunately, the mutation was not the kind they were going for. Furthermore, the children ended up with a type of mosaicism where some of the cells in one person can have different gene builds. This is just one reason gene editing in humans, let alone for something as not understood as longevity, is more of a dream than a reality. Another reason has to do with our tools. CRISPR-Cas9 is famous. It came out as a major breakthrough in genetics, but it turns out that these gene scissors work more like a butter knife when it comes to human cells. CRISPR system requires a guide RNA to tell it where to cut. When the DNA strands don't fully match the guide, sometimes Cas9 snips anyway. These mistakes, otherwise known as off-target cuts, lead to unintended modifications. So what can we do? There are two views I'd like to touch on for what aging is. The first is the wear and tear view, and the second is the replacement view. The wear and tear view sees aging as the accumulation of damage over time. It's the fact that damage accumulates faster than repair occurs. The replacement view is that the damage doesn't matter as much. It's more so that our bodies stop making new things to replace the damaged parts. As a quote from George Williams on the website Oxidus says, the senescence of human teeth consists not of their wearing out, but of their lack of replacement when worn out. Both views actually do have to do with damage though. One wouldn't need to replace their teeth if they didn't erode. Thus, what we can do about aging is, is simple. We need to slow down the damage we keep doing to ourselves. The biggest determinants of lifespan are environmental and personal actions. Actions like smoking and taking certain types of risks are indicators of a shorter life. Some actions can help increase predicted lifespan. As Elizabeth Blackburn suggests in her book, The Telomere Effect, these include exercising and maintaining a proper diet. Environment also plays an influential role. 
some things you may be able to help change, but there are many environmental situations that are beyond one individual's control. Some aspects correlated to lifespan include pollution, size of the community, wealth of the general area and country, and access to various resources. The mayfly lives 24 hours. The Greenland shark lives over 240 years. And us humans, we live an average of 72 years. And that number is growing as we continue to make breakthroughs in science, environmental health, and equality among all individuals. Gene editing to improve our lifespan is still a ways off. Right now, we can focus on our health, hygiene, and overall choices that affect our day-to-day -day being.